so you get excited and you want to like get your buttons now. Hello and welcome to another episode of Yarn to Table. I'm Celeste and this is a show about my knitting life. Um, I'm a bit out of practice. I'm in a new space. Uh, I've been running around trying to get the space ready and um, apologies if I'm a little out of sorts today. I am working from notes so I don't expect to forget anything but I might just be a little rusty and I'm also I can't find my tripod. So we, we cleaned out my office to make it um, into the baby's room. So I don't know where anything is. Um, so I have my uh, phone that I record on propped up with like a rock in front of it. Like it's a whole thing. So, <laughs> but I am very, very excited to catch you up on what I have been knitting lately. Um, I've gone crazy with the baby knits. Uh, if you missed my last episode, I'm pregnant and due December 7th. Um, so I am almost, um, I'm 21 weeks out of 40, if that uh, gives you an idea in my second trimester. Um, and I have gone really nuts with the baby knits. I think summer is the perfect time to knit small things. Um, and I just have so many exciting things to show you. I also have a weird project to show you, a crochet project, um, which uh, was not entirely successful, but is a little bit interesting. Um, and I, I have finished my garment that I was working on last time, and I have some dream knitting I wanna share about um, some of the sweaters that I might be knitting next. Um, and, I would also like to share a uh, children's book that is about knitting and yarn that I picked up while I was in New England um, last month. So, speaking of New England, uh, what I'm drinking today, it is so hot here, it's the end of July, um, and we've been having heat waves all through the US this year, so it's um, just kind of, horrible. Um, <laughs> so I'm not drinking tea, obviously. Um, I'm having sparkling water, and this is actually a Spindrift, which is a company out of Massachusetts that uh, I really fell in love with um, during our most recent trip to uh, New England. Um, it's basically sparkling water with just a little bit of fruit juice, like so little that, that everything is like five, like a can is like five calories or something. Um, and it's wonderful. This is my favorite one, which is grapefruit, but there's like, there's ones that are sweeter, like strawberry, and ones that are less sweet, like lemon. It's basically just lemon water, but all that's in them is sparkling water and fruit juice. And honestly, like, it's the best. Like, I'm completely obsessed with them, and it's all I want to drink every moment of every day now. Okay, by the way, there's a link in the doobly-doo to our group on Ravelry, and you can find show notes from every episode there. I am on Ravelry and Instagram as Celeste Full, and you can also find any info you might want on projects that I'm working on on my Ravelry projects page, which I keep completely up to date with yarns and um, most of the time even needle sizes, if I can remember, although I don't personally think that's that helpful to you because everyone's tension is different, um, but I try to keep it updated with that so that I know later what needle size I used if I want to make the same project again or make something at the same gauge with the same yarn, etc. I do want to show you my new space uh, really quickly. So um, I think I mentioned last episode that I would be moving out of my office to turn it into the baby's room. Uh, and so we moved my stash down here uh, into our uh, front room. Our, it's, it's sort of our living room, but it's not the um, room that we have our TV in where we spend like more time, which is in the back. Um, anyway, I moved this here and I wanted to do some kind of cute little thing next to it so that I could set up and uh, record here. And I had the idea today when I was looking in our attic for 
what things I might want to hang on the wall, um, to use one of these little shelves and then I can have a display that I can sort of change out, which I really like the idea of that and, and doing different things all the time. So I have my, um, my yarn pyramid up here and I also have this that I want to incorporate into the get up at some point. It's still wrapped up in tissue paper, but this is one of Katie Green's beautiful British Sheep Breeds poster that she illustrated um, for the, uh, just before the um, Edinburgh Yarn Festival. Um, so that's gonna be here somewhere, either hanging on the wall as well, or maybe framed and put on the shelf. Um, but I have lots of options here, so I just think it's really fun. Um, I have this tile with a sheep on it that we found when we were in Lisbon in January, um, and some uh, shade cards, which I just love shade cards, so I've always loved the idea of having them displayed a little bit uh, in my recording space. So yeah, this is the new space. Today I am wearing my finished object, which is the Maritimo by Caitlin Hunter. Um, it is a breezy, boxy, summertime, um, fingering weight wool top in the same kind of collection as the Tania. Um, she has been knitting a few different um, tops with the same sort of shape and short sleeves uh, that are all inspired by various different places in Italy. Um, which they are named after. And this is the uh, Maritimo. I did make the alteration of, um, instead of adding the sleeves, it has this drop shoulder here. And I just picked up and bound off because I decided that, although I love the sleeves on my Tania, they had basically the same sleeves, um, I was ready for it to be done, <laughs> but I also just really liked the idea of it being a little bit more different in the shape and style from the Tania and just a little bit lighter and breezier and easier to wear in the summer because I did knit it in this color. So the Tania is sort of in a grayish brown, um, variegated, it's uh, Dirty on Purpose by Villain Vine if you're familiar. and. I do wear it sometimes in the summer, um, not on the hottest days, but uh, it's a real transitional piece for me and it gets wear all year round. I wear it in the winter under things. Um, this I envision as more of a summer top and because it is wool, um, it's not the most breathable. Um, well, breathable isn't the right word. It's just not the coolest. It's, you know, wool keeps you a little bit warm. Um, so the idea of making the sleeves a bit shorter and keeping more of my skin bare and not um, covered in wool, especially in a place where the wool is fitted, uh, just seemed like a good alteration for me by the time I got there. I believe that's the only alteration that I did make. I'll stand up so you can see the feature of this top, which is the lacy panel, and it does fit um, quite well over my second trimester bump that I have. Um, I'm enjoying wearing more fitted things over the bump, honestly, than these sort of boxy things, but in terms of practicality, it's nice that I can still wear <laughs> the boxy things. Makes my wardrobe go a little bit further. Um, yeah, so I finished this just before we left um, for New England at the end of June uh, for my graduation in Massachusetts, and then we drove up and uh, had our graduation celebration slash baby moon vacation in Portland, Maine. Um, and I was really excited to finish this so that I could wear it on the trip and so that I could start on a more portable um, project to work on while I was on the trip, which was the first baby knit that I will show you in a moment. Um, yeah, and this is really great because I plan I've been planning this top for maybe two years now to use up leftover yarn. Um, the main color is the Sweet Sparrow Knits yarn that I purchased for a wispy cardigan, which um, I have no idea why I purchased four skeins. Like, I don't know what happened in my brain, but um, it was like twice the yarn I needed. <laughs> um, and so I had these two extra skeins that I needed to use and then 
Um, of course, with the lace, you know, you can get away with using leftovers because it's such a small amount. Um, and I used some leftovers from some club colorways, um, which all that information is in the show notes and on my projects page if you want to know the specific um, colorways for all the yarn that I talk about today and all of that. Um, yeah, so I loved getting to use up um, leftovers and I think it's a really cute um, warm weather project and I am happy to have it off the needles. I will say I enjoyed the lace. I started to get really bored uh, <laughs> with the stockinette. I just think I'm at a place right now in my knitting where I really struggle with straight up vanilla projects that just have large amounts of just knitting and that's it. Um, it just does not feed my soul the way that slightly more challenging um, projects uh, and, and just projects that have a little bit of something going on that engages you and makes you feel like you're doing something slightly different in every moment. Um, I did not enjoy <laughs> um, everything that came after the lace on this. It was worth it because I like the product and you know, unfortunately there's a lot more of that in my future because there are plenty of uh, simple garments that I want to wear that have acres and acres of stockinette and I will knit them and I will get through it, but it is not my favorite anymore. I will say that. Um, so moving along into my whips, um, I'm going to show you a little out of order just because I want to show you that weird crochet project first and then we can dive straight into the baby whips or I'm sorry, finished objects, um, which will take us into my work in project in progress, which is also a baby net. So we can just gush about all the baby nets in one section. Um, so first FO I want to share. So weird. It's so weird. <laughs> Not only did I crochet something, I crocheted shoes, guys. I don't, I don't know. It, I had like a brain hemorrhage or something. I just, who am I? I don't know. So I was making a romper um, for the baby and I was thinking about how it would be cute to make it in another size um, for the summer in um, some recycled denim uh, yarn that I know Will and the gang makes because uh, I have seen other people talk about it. And so I was just curious if that yarn would be the right gauge to make the romper with and I got on their website and I fell prey <laughs> to some really cute photos of crocheted espadrilles. And I just thought that is so interesting and cool and like this would make a fun, you know, summer project, just like a completely different thing to do to throw in there. It said it was good for beginner crocheters, which I am. Um, I mean, I don't know anything about crocheting. <laughs> um, and it said that they would crochet up quickly. And I just thought this will be a fun um, project for myself just to throw into the rotation with all those baby knits, all those quick knits that take a couple days, uh, you know, because I wanted to get a bunch of baby knits done before diving back into my selfish knitting on um, sweaters, which of course take much more time than a few days. Um, so I thought this will be fun. Let me throw that in there. And I will say I very much enjoyed making them. I really had fun challenging myself and learning a completely new skill with crochet. Um, I learned a variety of stitches to do this. And I know that American and British terminologies are different. I believe what I was using was British terminology but I'm not 100%, so don't quote me on that. But I believe with British terminology, I learned um, single crochet, double crochet, half double crochet, triple crochet, and then increasing and decreasing. Um, so that was a lot of different things. Um, I had to crochet these twice because I was, um, <laughs> I don't know if you know, but on, on the first row of crochet, when you're crocheting into your chain, you just go into like one leg of the little V's, and then after that you go into both legs. Well, the instructions were not clear about that. I think they thought that I wasn't like a beginner beginner, like that I would know 
the most basic things. Um, so I didn't know that. So <laughs> I was just going into the one leg of the V on all my rounds and thinking, this looks weird. Like, why is it going zigzag like this? Why is it so big? They ended up huge. I actually sewed them onto the first sole and I went, this is huge, what's going on? And I figured out what I had done. And so <laughs> I, I crocheted all four pieces one more time, cut them off the soles, sewed the back on the soles, all of that, um, to get to a place where it turns out I do not love wearing them. Uh, so I, I don't love the way that they feel. I don't love the way they kind of pull on my feet when I walk or uh, really how they look on my feet. Um, so I don't think I'm gonna wear them. And I did enjoy making them even though I had to make them twice. I really enjoyed the process of learning something new. It was challenging. It was the opposite of that, you know, stockinette black hole that I was just mentioning. Um, but in the end, I kind of feel like I wasted these materials and everything because I am not going to wear them. Um, that being said, I do think it's possible that someone would like to wear them. So I think I'm just gonna donate them. Um, and I will say, if you are going, you know, stop, stop, I want those. Um, they are women's size nine. And if you want them and you want to just Venmo me shipping expenses, um, I'd be happy to send them to you, so. Let me know. Uh, but <laughs> no hard feelings if no one else wants them either. <laughs> but I did enjoy learning to crochet. I really did. I I have always had mixed feelings about, um, sorry, I just have to move this little rock that's holding my camera up. I've always had mixed feelings about crocheting because um, I mentioned in my knitting journey video that when I was a kid and I wanted to learn how to knit, uh, I adults would try to appease me with um, crochet because they knew how to crochet and how to teach me that and um, I was like this isn't what I'm asking for I want to knit I knew the difference and I could tell the difference in the material and I was not interested in crocheting I was interested in knitting um, and I think because of that uh, initial frustration um, and also just you know I think there are a lot of projects out there where it feels like people are using crochet to do things that knitting could do better. Um, and it seems a little silly to me because it makes me think, well, you're just doing this because you only know how to crochet and like you should just learn how to knit because it's wonderful. I, I don't know. So I've always had like, I've, I've never really had a great desire to learn how myself um, to crochet because while I do recognize that there are things that it's definitely better for, I think knitting and crochet are just different and they have their own applications. Um, the things that crocheting is good for are just not things that I've ever been that particularly interested in. I've never, you know, there's very few patterns that I will stumble across on Ravelry and go, oh wow, that's, I, I wanna have that and it's a crochet pattern. Um, so this was just an unusual circumstance that I did see something that I wanted and it was crochet and it just the moment was right to learn something new. So I'm really glad that I got to have that opportunity to learn the craft a little bit um, at, a, at a very beginner level, obviously, um, <laughs> and making mistakes all over the place. But um, I enjoyed learning it because I did really like the... Uh, I just liked the mechanics of it. I liked the way it felt. Um, I enjoy the way that the material looks for certain things like espadrilles and baskets and stuff like that. Um, I don't love it as much for stuffed animals. I know that's a huge area of crochet is the amiguri. Am, is that what it is? The Japanese crocheted animals. Um, I like knit animals better personally because I just like the smoothness of the um, stitch versus the sort of knottedness of the crochet. Um, so I've, I've never been crazy tempted by those patterns, although they are very cute. Um, and then of course there's the sort of like lacy things and the lacy tops, which I like a lot of them, but I tend myself to lean more toward uh, color work and cables than lace anyway, just in terms of the aesthetics that I like, and so I've just never been tempted enough. Um, that being said, 
you know, I have been looking at crochet patterns since I did this and I have been thinking about whether it might be fun to make a crochet summer top um, maybe next year, especially because things that, that you crochet, they work up so quickly um, that I think it could be really fun to just do a quick uh, top with some uh, cotton yarn maybe and um, just have another, you know, it's like a process knit, right? Like, like I enjoyed the process so much of making the, the shoes, even though I don't love them, that I feel like even if I'm not crazy excited about a crochet top that I find, if I, if I just like it, but I'm not like over the moon about it, like I am over a lot of knit tops that are on my, um, in my queue, still, if it takes me like a quarter of the time to make, it might be worth just doing as like another fun summer project, right? So that's something I can see myself doing in the future. I'm open to it. Um, personally, I am a person, like I've experimented with yarn dyeing, which I, I did enjoy, but I um, not enough to do it a ton after my first um, foray. I've never really been interested in spinning. I've never really been interested in crochet. I've done a tiny bit of weaving, but again, it's like just, sort of on a whim. Um, I just like to knit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, like it's not that I'm not interested in, in the things that surround it. I mean, even sewing, like I want to sew more, but I, but I, but I want to sew more mainly because I want handmade items that you sew, not so much because I enjoy the process. Like I just don't enjoy anything as much as I enjoy knitting. And I guess I'm not, like I don't feel the need to just look for a lot of um, uh, similar crafts to like throw in. Like every now and then I do, and I go and I do something like that, and I think it's um, I think it's fun. Um, but at the same time, it always feels like it's time that I could spend knitting. <laughs> it's taking away from my knitting, and I just love knitting so much. Um, <laughs> so I think that's one of the reasons why. Uh, I have never learned to crochet until this moment and why I'm not just going mad and crocheting everything right now, even though I did really enjoy doing it. Um, just because nothing so far has ever held a candle to knitting for me. Okay, so moving along into baby knits. Um, the first thing I knit before, uh, so I finished this in time to leave for our uh, trip, and then before we even left, I did another just really fast, I think I did this in one sitting, um, really cute little baby knit, which is this uh, sweet little pixie, is what it's called, the um, this little bonnet, and it has these beautiful cables with eyelets running up both sides. It was uh, started here like a toe-up sock and knit in the round all the way down from the, the tip to the ends that have these little ties on them. And then the ties are really interesting because they are actually little ropes, you know, where you take some yarn and you twist it one direction and then twist them together the other, like when you're doing a rope braid with your hair, um, which I thought was really cool because it gives it more of a round shape, almost like an I-cord. Um, more than if you did just like a crochet chain, uh, but it was really fast. Um, and I think it just looks quite sweet. I like that look. And then the tassels. So instructions for the rope and the tassels are all in this pattern. Um, it, ha it comes in a lot of sizes and I really enjoyed it. I knit it out of sport weight yarn, which is what it called for um, the Quince & Co Chickadee. And I have been knitting a crazy amount of Quince & Co yarn lately, and I'm gonna show you um, a few different bases. So I would like to kind of talk about the differences between uh, the bases because I haven't knit with a ton of Quince & Co previous to this uh, last you know month or so. Um, I had knit a sweater out of Owl, which I'll be talking about Owl again in a second because I used leftovers from the sweater for something. Um, and I had knit my Davis out of the, uh, 
uh, I don't remember what it's called, but it's the sort of ribbon um, linen yarn. Turn, maybe? Turn might be the fingering weight linen yarn. This is like a worsted weight, or, or an Aran weight linen yarn. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, <laughs> I'd only used Quince and Co twice before and they were both kind of unusual yarns because um, Owl is like woolen spun and it's a two ply worsted and it's got alpaca in there. Uh, and of course the linen is, you know, a linen yarn and it was a ribbon. And so the, the main lineup of Quince and Co yarns are more like this, which is a worsted spun 100% wool. Um, the Chickadee is a three ply sport. And so this is kind of their, their bread and butter or the, some of the yarns that people think of them for. Finch, the fingering weight, which I'll show you in my um, work in progress. And um, I forget what the one is called. That's the, uh, the worst weight lark maybe. I haven't worked with that one yet, but um, it's been interesting because I just think that Quince and Co has such a beautiful, diversity of different yarns, so many different types, and they don't really, like, I feel like they don't really specialize just in one type. I mean, they do have something similar to this at a lot of different weights, this woolen spun, 100% wool, um, but some of their other yarns are really unusual, and I think they do a great job with all of them, because so far, every single base I've used, I have absolutely loved, and uh, they have really beautiful colors as well, so, I've just um, really been enjoying um, Quince and Co. And I, I uh, had subscribed to some of their like little boxes. I got like a couple of them, but then I canceled it because I felt like I was, you know, it was like a fun surprise, but I didn't always love the pattern and I didn't always want to make it. And then I would have the yarn and I would have to come up with something else to do with the yarn. And I just don't want my stash to just grow out of control. I would rather buy more intentionally. so. I enjoyed that for a while, I did cancel it, but it, through it, I ended up with a few um, Quince & Co yarns, like this one, the Chickadee, uh, that I then found baby nets for, and so I've been playing around, uh, and then since then I, I have gone and ordered more for other baby nets just because I've been so um, enjoying the yarn. So anyway, that's my story on this, I think it is just the sweetest little bonnet and it looks to me like a good size to fit a newborn um the other bonnet that i made which i'll show you later is a lot bigger than this and uh, we can compare them when i get into talking about that so that's this sweet little pixie and i finished it up as i said i think in one sitting before we went out of town and then um right after that i cast on these little pants for my travel knitting. And I knit these the whole time that we were gone. Um, I did not knit a ton while we were on vacation. Um, so I was, I, I only needed one project and these were perfect. Um, so this is the Hosen Mats and it's a fingering weight pattern for sweet little baby pants. Um, they do look a little big to me, but I think it's just because you're going to have that whole diapered butt in there. Um, I think these were zero to three month size, um, and they're probably closer to the three end of that than the zero. So hopefully they still fit her in the winter. Um, they would be cute into the spring, but I don't know how much she will need wool pants into the spring, but maybe she will. So I guess we'll just find out. Oh, and I just said she, we're having a girl. <laughs> I, I, uh, I know I, I didn't know last time I recorded an episode and I know some people are always very curious about that. So yes, we are having a girl. Um, we're naming her Cosette uh, or Coco for short or Cozy. Um, yeah, and we're very, very excited because we both wanted a girl. So. Yeah, hopefully if these don't fit her well until spring, they will still do nicely for her in the spring. This is knit out of some very special yarn that my friend Andy dyed of 10,000 stitches. Um, and when I saw it, I thought it would make such a sweet baby garment. So I snapped it up, it was a couple years ago, and um, I've been saving it in my stash for something baby related ever since then. 
And of course it was what I went to when it came time to make my first baby garment. So these are very special knowing that they were hand dyed by her and hand knit by me. Um, she called this colorway day old birthday cake because it has all these different sort of funfetti colors that bleed into each other. But then also show up in these really great little more saturated moments just to show off one or two stitches. So I just think it's really, really, really beautiful yarn. Um, I was a little frustrated by this pattern. I will say, like I said, like it feels a little bit big and um, the uh, crotch of it was seamed instead of, um, of doing like a Kitchener stitch, which I know I could have just gone rogue and done a Kitchener stitch instead, but for whatever reason, I, I just kind of trusted them as I was reading the pattern. I just thought, well, I guess they know what they're doing, but it just makes this kind of ugly seam across the crotch that I don't think is necessary. Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't crazy impressed, I have to say, although they did turn out very, very cute. <laughs> um, I don't think I would knit the same pattern again, unless it turns out that, you know, they fit her amazingly well, and then maybe I'll just make the change to Kitchener stitch and do them again, who knows. But yeah, love the idea of some cute little knit uh, pants, so that is fun. Um, and then when we got back, I finished those up and I cast on another hat for her, which is this, the Feathers Bonnet, which I made out of some leftovers from, this was the main color on my um, Tecumseh. And it is a beautiful, it, it almost looks gray, but then you look up close and it's lavenders and pinks, just a really gorgeous, subtly variegated colorway from Madeline Tosh. Um, this is on the Work Sock, which Although it's called Work Sock, it is a sport base, they claim, but I think it's more of a DK. <laughs> so it's all very confusing. Um, this was a sport weight hat pattern. So by using something that knits up more like a DK, I knew that I would quite possibly be um, knitting a hat a little bit bigger than what I thought. And I'm fine with that because it'll be nice to have hats that fit her as she grows. That being said, you can tell it's quite a bit bigger than the other one. So I'm a little worried that it won't fit her until the heat of summer. <laughs> um, but maybe it'll still fit her for her next winter. We will see. Uh, anyway, it's a lovely pattern as well. Um, cast on here and knit in the flat this direction and then Kitchener the end, I believe. That's how I did that. And it has this beautiful I-cord, um, yeah, I knit this direction and then there was an I-cord bind off, which is along this edge and that becomes the, the base of her neck. And it creates its own ties. So you start with an I-cord, you work it up, then you I-cord bind off, and then you continue the I-cord. So it's a really beautiful, seamless, um, really sleek construction and very smart, I thought. Um, and has this gorgeous feathery lace on it, which I really, really enjoy. So this was a fast knit. It was a very enjoyable knit. It had some challenges with the lace and the eye cord, some interesting things to do and not a ton of boring stockinette. So. I really enjoyed that project. And at that point, I thought, okay, she has a few hats, she has some booties, she has some socks. I'm ready to get into more garment knitting. I've done the hose and mats pants. I wanted to do some really cute rompers. And at this point, um, you know, a lot of these hats worked with leftovers or single skeins, things like that. And for a uh, entire um, garment, I found that, you know, I wanted, although there were things in my um, stash, leftovers and things that I could have used, I really wanted to give myself the, uh, the treat of just choosing yarn specifically for some specific um, 
patterns like I typically do for myself when I make garments just so that I know that I'm going to love them extra and they're not going to feel like a compromise uh, based on just trying to use up some yarn like I did with I did that with this but um I don't that's not typically my MO when I make garments so I thought I wanted to do that for her so I ordered some yarn from Quince and Co and I made um, this first little romper and then also the um, onesie that I will show you that is a whip right now. Um, but this little thing kills me. And then look at the back. Oh my gosh, so cute. So this is made with Quince & Co Phoebe. And Phoebe is um, also 100% wool. Yeah, but it is actually 100% merino wool, so it's a little bit softer. Um, and it is a four ply DK weight, also worsted spun. And um, this colorway, Ursa, it looked a bit more like a pinkish brown, like a mauvey brown in the photo. Um, so I was a little disappointed that it, it's actually more of a true brown. Um, but I still think it looks absolutely adorable. So I, you know, completely over my disappointment because I can't imagine this being any cuter. I love it with the dark brown and then the light natural brown wooden buttons. And this knit up very quickly. It was a joy. I cast on here at the back of the butt and knit down and then up and then knit these straps separately. Um, the whole thing is in garter stitch, so it's all knits and you really just have to worry about increasing and decreasing. You have some purling for the rib, but I think this is a wonderful, wonderful beginner's project. If you are a beginner and you wanna knit a cute little baby item as a gift or for your own baby, I absolutely recommend this. Um, the pattern even did not mess around with uh, left-leaning and right-leaning increases and decreases. Um, or maybe it did, I think it did say knit two together or slip slip knit, but it didn't say make one right or left, it just said make one. So I uh, did right and left make ones myself, um, just to make it a little bit more polished, but it's not necessary that you worry about stuff like that. If you don't feel like it and you're more of a beginner, you can just do make ones, you can do knit into the front and the back, whatever kind of increase you feel more comfortable with uh, will we'll really, get hidden in the, the bumps of the garter. And so um, little details like that will not be as noticeable on this project if you uh, don't wanna worry about it. And the buttonholes were really simple. They were just a yarn over um, with a decrease. And um, it told you exactly where to put the buttonholes, unlike on the project that I'm working on now, which we will talk about. Uh, what it did not tell me was what size buttons to get, which I find frustrating because what that means to me is I have to knit the item and then sort of measure the space where the buttonholes are to buy my buttons. Um, I kind of feel like whoever at the pattern should tell you what size buttons you need. Um, but I, that has been the thing I have had to measure myself on this and on the romper the other onesie that I'm making now. So, I mean, it's not a difficult thing to do, but it does mean that you have to buy your button your buttons after you start knitting the project. Um, and sometimes you just, you get excited and you wanna like get your buttons now. <laughs> so that's my tiny little um, complaint. But yeah, I loved making this and I love it. And I want to make more of these. This is the romper that I was thinking would look cute in the recycled denim yarn for summer. And I was also picturing it in like a bright green or a bright red with strawberry buttons for summer. Um, I think it would make a great little summer outfit just on its own or maybe with just a little short sleeve onesie underneath. Um, in the winter time, I will be giving her tights and something long sleeve to wear underneath. But really, really, really sweet. I just absolutely love the shape of this and the way the buttons are. It's so simple, um, but it's so well designed aesthetically. It's just so, so, so beautiful. So hats off to the designer on this one. 
really, really enjoyed this and I think I will make more. And I am not one to make the same pattern more than once ordinarily. That is not a big thing that I do. So that's saying something. At this point, there was another little garment that I wanted to make that I ordered some more um, Phoebe yarn for right here. But I'm in the middle of a whole ordeal <laughs> because although it is on Ravelry and it says it's available to purchase on Ravelry, it is actually not. It just there's no buy now button. It's just very confusing. So I have sent a message to the designer and you know, obviously I didn't realize that until after I bought the yarn and I really, really want to make it. So I think I'm either going to, if I can't find a way to purchase the pattern, I might just make something similar of my own design, just kind of looking at the pictures and trying to recreate it because I really, really have my heart set on it. Sorry, this is so choppy. Um, I keep having to start the recording over because it doesn't have storage space. Um, okay, so I was talking about I had this garment that I wanted to make next that wasn't going to happen. Um, the next garment was a fingering weight one, so I knew it was going to take a little bit more time and I kind of thought maybe I'm done with baby knits and I, you know, for now and I just want, I'm really feeling like working on a sweater for myself. Um, so I thought I'm going to just do that um, and I will get to these other garments after that. Because I still have like, you know, so much time before the baby comes. Um, so that was my plan. And then, um, then what happened was I decided what I wanted to make next, which is a Soldotna uh, crop by Caitlin Hunter. And I decided that I was going to make it using some leftover uh, Madeline Tosh um, work sock but I also needed a couple new colors. Um, and so I ordered those. And the thing about when you order from Madeline Tosh is they don't really give you an idea of when they're going to ship it. Um, sometimes it takes way longer than you thought. Sometimes it shows up out of nowhere. And um, you know they tell you your order confirmation and they do tell you when it ships, but they don't give you an idea of how long until it ships because I think a lot of their yarns are dyed to order. Um, so, I was trying to time that out and find something to work on as I waited for my yarn. And I looked at the last time I had ordered from Mad Tosh and how long it took. And I was thinking, okay, I've got, I've got some time here. <laughs> so I decided to make a few more small things for the baby while I waited instead of jumping into the garment. Um, so the next thing I made at this point in time, we went and we had our 20 week um, ultrasound and I have this amazing picture of uh, her hand, her little fist, and she's just raised it up like um, she is a little resistor in there. I love it. Um, I shared it by the way on Instagram stories and if you wanna see it, I have a um, high preserved highlights reel uh, called Expecting, which has a bunch of stuff about pregnancy in it, so it's in there. But anyway, falling in love with her hand like that <laughs> made me think that the next thing to knit would be something that I have had as a plan for a little while, which is some tiny little self boot mittens. Oh my god, look how cute they are. They're so little. So, if you are not familiar, self boot mittens are a traditional Norwegian style mitten. They often have this snowflake pattern on the front, although there are some other um, flor floral ones and other traditional ones. They always have this point to them. And they usually have a smaller sort of repeating pattern on the back. They also usually have thumbs, <laughs> but for infants, you don't really need thumbs um, because it's really just about keeping their hands warm and, and also sometimes people use them to keep them from scratching themselves, um, but because they're not really like doing anything with, anything with their hands, you don't need to make the little thumbs and try to get their little thumb in there. There's no point. So, I saw these um, when Fiber Tails made some, uh, I think last summer, before her boy was born last winter. Um, and I thought, 
those are the cutest thing ever. Um, <laughs> and so when I found out that I was gonna have a winter baby, I knew that I wanted to make her some because uh, if we do, you know, have to take her out of the house at all in those early months, I just wanna make sure she is absolutely as warm as can be. Hey, Aggie, you making noises, jumping around? Yeah. Hey. What's the matter? He's very upset. Yeah. You want me to go play with you again? And the interruptions just keep coming. <laughs> so, if it feels like the camera has moved all over the place during this whole thing, it's because every time I get interrupted, it falls and I have to prop it up again with the rock and it's a whole thing guys oh my gosh <laughs> wow it's like everything is against me recording today but it's been so long and I have so many nits to show you I just had to make it happen and we're still going we're still here let's get through it Let's get through it together. <laughs> so we were discussing these adorable little mittens. So cute. And um, what to say about them. Um, I thought it would be nice just before doing this little donut, because a lot of you know, I don't feel super comfortable with stranded color work. I don't think I'm that great at it. Um, your intention is just a challenge of mine. I hold the yarn really weird. I have not been disciplined enough to force myself to slow down to hold it in the proper way and as such I have a loose gauge and I have trouble with color work and it's just a whole thing. So um, I'm about to do this color work sweater just because I really really want to and I thought it might be nice to do a little color work project while I waited for the yarn. So that was part of it. The sweet little hand and the ultrasound <laughs> was part of it um, and I really really love these they knit up incredibly fast they were really fun to do um, I just knit the magic loop style on a uh, sock needle that I have I think I used a 2.25 um, I will say the pattern is completely in Norwegian so it doesn't really matter because it's basically you're just following a chart um, but I did follow the instructions that someone else had on their pattern page, their, their project page, of how many uh, stitches they cast on and how they increased right here through the stripes to make an infant size one. Um, if you just sort it by helpful projects, it comes right up. And then at the top, I didn't know what to do with my remaining stitches, if I should try to Kitchener or if I should just like weave both strands of yarn through all the loose stitches, which is what I ended up doing. So it created this, um, I don't know if you can really see, yeah, this sort of candy stripe effect. And I'm not sure if that is what it is supposed to look like, because I have not knit regular cell mittens before. But it seemed to me like since they are traditional Norwegian um, mittens, that was probably more likely than a Kitchener stitch finish. And also I sort of started to try a Kitchener stitch finish and it looked silly. Um, all the stitches I had on my needles were sort of black and then white and then black and then white. And I really wanted these two black borders to sort of be able to meet at the top, but the way that I did it with just stranding it through what was left, they were not able to. And it looked to me like on other photos of real full-size Selby mittens, like they do. So I'm not sure if that's just because this chart didn't make them knit meet before it was time to finish or if there's some other way I'm supposed to be finishing them. But that was my sort of experiment there. Um, the whole thing is a Norwegian. So what are you gonna do? <laughs> um, okay, and then the final uh, finished object is something really, really, really sweet. Just this little bunny. <laughs> you guys, have I been, I didn't kid, I'm not kidding when I said like I've been knitting up baby items like crazy, right? It's a lot. Aki, I, 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 
he is just very upset that I'm recording. I keep taking breaks to go follow him and play with him or give him fresh food or pet him and cuddle him, all the different things that he wants. And then he seems satisfied and then I come back to record and he follows me back over and complains that I stopped to come back to record. Come here. Do you wanna sit here with me? Do you wanna sit here and get cuddles? You can sit in my lap, but I have to record. I have to finish, okay? I'm gonna sit right here. I know it's not a very comfy chair, is it? Say hi to all the people. Hi to all the people. So we're gonna try to work it like this for now. Um, I have known that I wanted to make her a special stuffed animal to have uh, a hand knit one to have when she's born. And um, I've had a lot of trouble deciding which one. And of course I will make her plenty of different stuffed animals in the future and toys and stuff. But the first one just felt like a very special item. And um, so I wanted to choose something that I would really love. And, you know, I kind of had different contenders and I wasn't completely sure. And I'd marked all of them as favorites on Ravelry. And then I was just looking completely for something else. I was looking through to see what I might be able to do with the leftover Quince & Co. Owl yarn that I have from the Flome cardigan that I made a while ago. Um, Owl is just an absolutely beautiful yarn. Just gonna see if we can hold this guy up here while we talk, no? No, this is crazy, this is crazy. Sorry, I know you probably want to look at the bunny instead of looking at Augie, but this is what we've got. So, yeah. So Owl is a really, really special, beautiful yarn. As I mentioned, it's very different than some of the other yarns Quince & Co has. It's half alpaca. It has a woolen spun. Um, it's woolen spun instead of worsted spun, so that makes it really airy and fluffy. And then even though it is a worsted weight yarn, it's only a two ply. So uh, it's really just this yummy, rustic, um, you can see it has kind of a bit of a fuzziness. It has almost a bit of like a thick, thin quality to it when you knit it up. It's not very dramatic, but there's a subtleness to which it gets a little thicker in some places and thinner in others. It's beautifully heathered. And, uh, and it's, it's rustic, but it's not too scratchy at all because it is half alpaca. And alpaca is very, very soft. So you have it bringing that softness to the party. Um, just an incredibly beautiful, natural, um, really, really special yarn. And I had a fair amount of it left over after my sweater and I, well, the camera fell and it scared Augie away. Augie, you can come back? He'll probably come interrupt us in a second. Okay. <laughs> this is a fiasco. So, talking about the yarn. I had a fair amount of it left over and I really wanted to find something special to do with it. But it's not enough to make a whole other garment and um, I didn't love the idea that it's a hat, even though, like I said, it's not really itchy. I just feel like this part of my body is really, really sensitive when it comes to itchiness. So I like to have a pretty soft yarn, um, when I do a hat and I just never really found anything. So I think normally when I look for what to make with it, I search for patterns that are made with worsted weight yarn in the amount of yardage that I have. Um, and this time, instead of doing that, I searched for, I went to the Owl Yarn page on Ravelry and I searched for pattern ideas. And what it does with that is it shows you patterns that other people have used this yarn for. And so this came up, even though this is knit, uh, it's, it's a pattern written for sport weight yarn, I think, or DK actually. Um, this came up because four different people had used Quince & Co. Owl to make it, which is worsted weight. And of course, it's really easy to adapt um, a stuffed animal pattern to a different uh, yarn weight. You just change your needle size 
to whatever is appropriate for the gauge that you want and your stuffed animal ends up a slightly different size. It's not a big deal at all. So a few different people had used owl to knit their bunnies and I saw the pictures of them and I thought they looked so cute done in that yarn. Like it's the perfect yarn project combination. And that's what they were saying too. Several of the people who had made it were like, I'm so glad I chose this yarn. It was the perfect yarn for this project. And I just have to agree. I mean, the, the yarn just really makes it because it's such a simple little bunny and it just really shows off the beauty of the yarn. And I really wanted this to be something that was a natural color, um, her first stuffed animal that is, like a simple, sweet, natural color with a really beautiful, natural yarn um, that would just show off the personality of the animal itself um, and have the yarn just be the perfect palette to do that. And I think with the fuzziness of the owl, it really gives you that like animal quality. Um, it really feels handmade because of this, the really subtle thick thin quality to it. It's just perfect. So I knew when I saw that combination of yarn and, and stuffed animal, I knew this was gonna be perfect. Um, I loved the idea of making her bunny because I just think their long ears are so wonderful to feel when you're a little kid. And um, I just think it's so, so, so cute. So I made this. Uh, using the Quince & Co. Owl. I sized my needles way, way, way down. Um, I think typically a pattern will tell you for a stuffed animal maybe to use needles like two sizes smaller than you normally would because you don't want to have, you want your gauge really, really thick because you don't need it to be a drapey fabric because it's an animal and then you don't want to see the spaces in between the stitches at all because then the filling will show. So you always size down most patterns tend to tell you size down by a couple needle sizes. I think I I size down like a whole lot for this. You can see on my project page what I used, but I think I used like a US 2 or something with worsted weight yarn. So really, really dramatic um, difference to get this really nice thick ga gauge. As you can see, just nothing is showing through. Uh, and I just think it's perfect. Um, I filled it with polyfill. The pattern strongly recommended using natural wool because it is warmer, um, which does sound quite nice, but as I'm not a spinner, I don't have natural wool lying around, so I would have to buy it, and I do have polyfill lying around. Um, and then also, I think that over time, uh, stuffed animals filled with natural wool, the wool will eventually compress and they will start to get a little floppier, whereas the polyfill tends to hold its shape for longer, I think. Um, and because this is something I wanted to be really heirloom quality, that was another thing that made me feel good about using the polyfill. So I did stuff it with polyfill. The whole thing is knit in pieces and all seamed together. So the head, the body, each of the limbs and each of the ears are all separate pieces. Uh, each of the pieces is stuffed right before you do your final row and then you, um, you know, you decrease a lot on that row and then you um, do the yarn through all your live stitches and, and bring it together, which is here. And then this is actually the cast on row here is where the seam is for each of these. And uh, the ears are knit as a tube, just like all the other pieces, but they're not stuffed. Um, and so they have this really sweet little finish on the top. You can see it's like the top of a hat. Again, just like on all the limbs. Um, and that is also right at the front here. And then I embroidered the face um, using some quince, or no, some uh, Brooklyn Tweed shelter cast iron that I have. And I pulled it just a little bit tight. This was a suggestion that the pattern made to pull the eyes in a little bit, which helps give the face a bit of shape. And um, yeah, I did, I did not mind seaming. I actually quite like seaming pieces when you do stuffed animals because you don't have to try to pick up uh, and knit out from the animal. It can be very awkward. Um, and personally, I don't mind seaming at all. 
So I like that the challenge of it was just making sure everything was placed perfectly. So the ears are still a little bit asymmetric, which I actually think is kind of cute. So I'm not changing that, but I did sew one of the legs on twice to get it more um, symmetrically spaced with the other leg. And then I sewed the head to the body, um, not just around where the neck hole was from the body piece, but I actually sewed out a little bit here just to bring the head down a little because at first it was it was kind of popping up like this um yeah and that's all my all my um little tips on this guy highly recommend really really sweet and highly recommend the yarn very very highly if there's a project that calls for it or that you think it would be good in I adored working with it in the sweater and in the in the bunny. So I'll be looking for excuses to use that yarn again. Okay, we have finally reached the end of finished objects. <laughs> so I had a lot to catch you up on, right? Like I had to record today, even though I'm clearly a mess, I had to record today. I have one work in progress. All this time with all these little projects, I have been full monogamous working on one at a time and finishing it before starting the other. It has been wonderful. It reduces my stress a lot to know that each thing is just gonna come in its own term, turn and I don't feel like I have too many things going and, um, and it really helps me finish projects and let go of any kind of guilt around not finishing them and and if I'm not going to finish them, I just frog them instead of thinking I'm gonna get back to them. And different strokes for different folks, you know? Like, I'm not saying this works for everyone, but this has been a really good move for me. I'm, I'm really happy about it. So, my one whip is in this new natural French supply bag that I picked up at Gather here when I was in Cambridge. Um, just before driving up to Maine actually on that morning I went to gather here for the first time which is crazy because it's really close to where I stay there um, but I had just never been before and I've always really liked the natural color on the fringe field bag because it has these beautiful little specks in the linen of brown so nice little graduation present to myself and in here I have this onesie I have been mentioning, the Fingering Weight onesie, which I'm making with Quince & Co. Finch, uh, which is a 100% wool, Fingering Weight, four ply, woolen spun. So Finch, um, Phoebe, and Chickadee are all very similar yarns, but at different weights. And I'm assuming Lark, which I think is what their worsted weight is called, would be a similar yarn as well. So really good, um, workhouse yarn you know it's uh, it doesn't have the unusual airy uh, fuzzy qualities of something like the owl which is more of a um, novelty yarn is definitely not the right term but I want to say it's like a you know it's more like a specific thing uh, whereas these are more like very versatile yarns that I think would make sense with a lot of different projects yeah I think that's what I'm trying to say Anyway, <laughs> this has been Celeste Reviews every Quince & Co. yarn there is because it's apparently all she knits with now. So, this little onesie is uh, being knit flat. I finished the yoke and put the little sleeves on holders and I'm now doing the body. And it is going to be long sleeve with a, um, with just a little onesie body, so just a little crotch that'll have some buttons, um, but no legs or anything. And this is the um, Tiri Tunge, I think is how you say it. Again, all of these are in the um, show notes with the designer's names and the yarn that I'm using and everything. And they're all also on my projects page on Ravelry. And what's really special about this, you can see it's being knit flat, right? It has 
this button band panel that runs on the line of like the uh, like a um, raglan. So you have these beautiful cables here, eyelets in the middle, stockinette sleeves, and then running at an angle just down this raglan seam and then running down the side of the entire body is this seed stitch button band. So this is a pattern that I have long been in love with. Um, I made it the cover of my um, bundle of favorite patterns for little guys, uh, my little ones bundle. And the project, the, the um, sample is knit in a soft gray like this. I've always known I would want to do it in a soft gray. If I could only have one favorite color in the world, it would probably be the soft gray. And knowing I'm gonna have a winter baby, I could not think of a more perfect little outfit. I think this is probably going to be the special outfit that is the first thing that she wears um, or and or maybe the first thing that we take her photo in, um, you know, to, sh um, to announce. It's just very special and precious. I love these little eyelets and the cables. So I picked this totally as like a product knit because this is, I, I bought the yarn specifically for it. I knew that I wanted something that was a soft um, gray. I wanted the yarn to be not too rustic because it's on a sweet little baby. Um, and this finch is perfect for that. It's not a super wash and it doesn't have, it's not 100% merino. It does, doesn't have any cashmere or anything. I did think about buying something with cashmere, but, um, but it is, you know, I think soft enough for a baby. I think it's really a really nice soft yarn. And uh, it has this gorgeous heatheriness to the yarn. If you can see there, grays and whites and everything just beautifully heathered together. So really, really like this. The colorway is called um, Iceland. And it has this nice little garter stitch um, neckline. I cast on up here and I've, I've uh, you know, been knitting in, in the flat all in one piece. It has been very enjoyable to knit because it is that little bit of a challenge. You have all these little sections that you're coming to and each one of them requires something different. You're following a chart for the cables and the eyelets. Um, you're increasing until you get past the yoke. And I, cables are like my favorite thing to knit. So I, <laughs> I love having that just little bit of cable -y goodness, although it's not enough to satisfy my, my cable cravings. I need to do an all over cable sweater soon. Um, but the cables and the eyelets and the increasing in the yoke give you enough to think about that. Um, it's actually like when I was knitting on it while we were watching a movie, I was um, making mistakes and having to drop down in the cable and fix them. I cabled the wrong direction once, and once I cabled on the wrong row in, just in one of the cables. So um, it's complex enough. Uh, so it's very, it's very interesting and enjoyable for me um, where I'm at with my knitting right now. That's, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I don't want something too mindless. Um, it is a little bit more complicated than it needs to be in that it doesn't tell you actually where to put your buttonholes for each size. It just says place buttonholes every four centimeters, I think. Um, so I just had to be really on the ball to make sure that I was measuring before I got to four centimeters for that second buttonhole. And then at that point, I counted how many rows there were, or actually I counted how many cables there were in between um, the two buttonholes. And I've been using that to make sure that I space them evenly. Um, but that's been an additional thing that I kind of have to do on my own on the side that's not integrated into the pattern, which could be frustrating, um, especially for a beginner, I don't think I would recommend this pattern for a beginner. Um, not because the actual techniques are too difficult, but just because 
you might get frustrated with the fact that it's not written to hold your hand. Um, which, I, I mean, I've complained about that in the past, about patterns that do that, and I, I do think that they should give you all the information you need. But for this one in particular, I guess, I guess it's probably because I haven't, <laughs> I haven't screwed anything up yet with the buttonholes. I haven't been too frustrated by them yet. I did notice that on some of the larger sizes, it looks like in order to get that last buttonhole at the very end, um, the two last buttonholes are too close together and I don't like the way that looks. So that would be frustrating to me if I were knitting that size. I think with the zero to three months, I'm gonna be fine. But um, it certainly looked to me like that is a problem. And so if I were knitting that size, I would look at it and I would not space them every um, four centimeters. I would space them however often they need to be spaced so that you can keep them even across the whole thing, just like on what I'm assuming was the sample size. So. I guess that's a way in which it hasn't really been graded properly. I think that when you're gonna grade a pattern, um, every size should be, you shouldn't have to make a compromise in the aesthetics because you're knitting a different size. I think that it's the job of the person grading the pattern and designing the pattern to make sure that, you know, if you've evenly spaced buttons on one size, you're gonna have evenly spaced buttons on the other size. So those would be caveats for recommending this pattern. That said, personally, I'm loving it. I'm not having any major challenges. Um, and I think it is going to be amazingly cute, amazingly cute. The other thing I will say, the other caveat on that is just that this is a um, pattern from, I believe a Danish designer. It is in English, uh, but I believe there are some cultural differences in terms of what the expectation is around um, knitting patterns and how detailed they are and what they tell you and when they chart things and stuff like that um, so I do want to say that in terms of like uh, I don't want to be overly critical of patterns that don't give as much information as I expect as an American who knits a lot of American patterns because that might not be the cultural expectation for knitting patterns in the place where that pattern initially came out. And now just because it's been translated into English doesn't mean it's going to adhere to all of the expectations that American pattern writers have. So for what it's worth, there you go. Trying to not be an ugly American about it. Yeah, so that's this beautiful little thing. I have my little um, pig widget on there, keeping me company. I just love that little guy, so cute. And I am maybe halfway through this 50 gram skein so far. The pattern said that I would need more than one 50 gram skein, so I do have a second. Um, but I don't think I'm gonna need much more than one because I'm pretty far in this body and I still have tons left here. But I am making full length sleeves, like I said. So um, I probably will need a little more than 50 grams, but I doubt I'm gonna, gonna use the whole 100 grams that I got for it. And that will bring me into dream knitting. So like I said, um, I'm planning on knitting the Soldotna crop next. I actually got the notification that my yarn had not only shipped, but would be arriving that very day, <laughs> um, just after casting on the little onesie. Uh, so not excellent timing because I finally sort of bit the bullet and cast on the onesie, even though I knew it was gonna take more than a, just a couple days, um, cause I wanted to have something to work on while I was waiting for the yarn. And I'm not going to set it aside and dive into the Soldotna. I'm definitely gonna finish it, for one thing, because I'm enjoying it. And also because, like I said, the, the monogamous knitting thing has been working well and it's been helping me to um, feel really good about my knitting and not have any negative feelings tied up in my knitting. Um, so I'm definitely sticking to the plan and I'm gonna finish that. That being said, I cannot wait to cast on this lovely bunch of colors for the Soldotna crop. Um, I'm really excited about this pattern. I love color work. I don't, I wouldn't even say I don't love knitting it. I don't feel like I'm good at knitting it, <laughs> um, which is why I sometimes stay away from color work um, 
projects and I probably would not have chosen another one so soon if I didn't look at this and realize it was exactly what I wanted to make because I am at a point now where if I wear a cute little bodycon dress, I can show off my bump and it looks really, really adorable. And I think transitioning into fall, doing that with a cropped sweater is gonna be like the cutest thing ever. So I was thinking I would probably make myself a cardigan next as something I can wear with the bump, but I actually think cropped sweaters are gonna be a great option and actually more in line with my style. Um, and, and just things that I'm more excited about. So I have this and I have another one I wanna talk about um, that are both sort of cropped sweaters that I think would be really cute to wear with something more fitted over the bump, be it a bodycon dress or um, even just a, a tank or a t-shirt underneath. So the Soldotna is a four color color work pattern, um, beautiful color work yoke, and then the sort of um, flea, uh, color work throughout the body and short sleeves. I think it's going to knit up really fast. I think it's going to hold my attention the whole time because it is color work everywhere. Um, so no big boring spaces of just stockinette. And as I was deciding on my palette, looking at different possible yarns and everything, um, I realized that I really wanted a kind of a gold in there and I really needed something neutrally and I still have tons of uh, this Madeline Tosh work sock which I love working with um, left over from the Tecumseh so this is what I just did that feathers bonnet out of um, and I still have enough to use it as one of the contrast colors in the Soldotna um, and I started looking at the other colorways available and I found this really beautiful um, navy which is called Nocturne. Yeah, okay, Nocturne. Anyway, that reminds me of Harry Potter, Nocturne Alley. It's a really beautiful navy blue. It's It's got some, a bit of a, what do you call it, like a bit of a tonal quality where there are places where you can see more of the blue underneath in places where it's darker and almost black. Um, that's really, really lovely. And then this is gonna be my main body color. It is called No Farewell, and it's a cool little mint color with these speckles of rust that I think are gonna go really well with the, the rye bourbon. So yeah, I am excited. I wanted to be really intentional about choosing these colors and making sure that not just the four of them went well together, but that they seem like they were going to be work like they were going to work well with the pattern because I've seen a lot of people make it and there are some color combinations that I've seen where the colors look really pretty together but it's almost like they didn't choose the right color for the right piece of the color work to really show off the colors to their best effect and the color work to its best effect so I kind of studied what Caitlin Hunter had done on her sample and what some of the other versions that I really liked did and I got an idea of like you know this one contrast color is the darkest one and then this one is sort of light and then this you know is a place where um, you could do a pop of more of a mid-range um, so I sort of took that into consideration and then I even pulled up a um, I pulled up a Photoshop uh, thing on my computer where I took like a, uh, I took the sketch from her pattern and I put it in there and then I, I colored it with different colors, um, actually choosing directly from like, like, you know, using the little tool where you pick up a color and you use that color um, directly from the images on Madeline Tosh's website so that I was using the closest color to what I was thinking about and filling it in a little bit, you know, just in a sketchy way. I didn't make it perfect or anything, but I did that to play around with a few different options and ultimately make my final decision on what I wanted to do. So I think I have done the sufficient amount of planning to make sure that I will be really pleased with how my colors come out. Um, and another way of doing that is, you know, to knit swatches, but I think what's great about this is uh, 
it's faster and you don't have to go and then buy more yarn if you've decided that the yarn that you bought isn't gonna work at all, even if you change it for like a different part of the, of the pattern. So I feel really confident just diving in with this and not um, swatching for what that color story is gonna be. So I'm very excited. So that'll be coming next. And finally, the other slightly cropped um, sweater that I have been thinking I might knit sometime soon is uh, Andrew Mallory's or Andrea Mallory's um, Nurtured, which is a pretty textured, uh, all over um, slip, stick tex slip stitch textured sweater with long sleeves and a slightly cropped, slightly boxy body. Uh, a lot of people have knit it. It looks like it knits up fast and would be fun and that slip stitch texture would be just enough of something to hold your interest. And it is one of the patterns that I came across when I went looking for a sweater that I could make with 1,280 yards of worsted weight yarn. Uh, why 1,280 yards of worsted weight yarn? Well, because I know we're still waiting on the human baby, but the yarn baby is here. <laughs> this, for the uninitiated, is lovingly referred to as a yarn baby, <laughs> and it is a giant skein of worsted weight yarn, 1,280 yards of beautifully hand-dyed worsted weight yarn um, from Jill Draper Makes Stuff. This is called her Empire. So this is 100% New York State Rambouille, um, or Rambouille, possibly. And it is yummy. It has the tiny little flecks of straw in it in places. <laughs> it is hand dyed so beautifully with speckling and tonal qualities, these browns and reds and oranges. You can see there's nubbly little bits on the yarn where it's taken the dye a little bit differently. Just a dream for a fall sweater in this color. I mean, ugh. So the story here is I really thought this was going to be the year that I was going to get to go to um, <laughs> Rhinebeck. I actually started to make plans and everything um, before I came to my senses and realized that it's not a good idea to do that while I'm seven months pregnant. It's just too much and I need to know my limitations. Um, so, Once again, I'm not going to Rhinebeck this year. I feel like I say this every single year. There's always some reason and it never happens. And now I'm telling myself I'm gonna go next year with a 10 month old, but we'll find out if that seems insane when we get closer to that period, once I actually know what being a mother is like. Um, this is my Rhinebeck consolation prize. This to me says Rhinebeck. It is those autumn colors. It's that rustic yarn. I'm gonna knit a sweater with it. Show me your Rhinebeck sweater. Maybe it'll be my Rhinebeck sweater. And of course, Jill Draper has her shop there in New York. So anyway, it's just all of the things that make me think of Rhinebeck, all of the things that I think Rhinebeck is. Um, and I have been wanting one of these for a while. I thought I would buy one when I went to run back um, and I decided instead I would just go ahead and get myself one. And uh, I think the Nurtured is going to be the most perfect thing to make with this yarn. And this will be the most perfect yarn to make into the Nurtured. So very, very excited about that one. And finally, at the end of this very long episode, that brings me to my little bit of chit chat, just something that I wanted to share. Um, yarn related and baby related um, and our vacation related. So um, while we were in Cambridge, I found this at Harvard Bookstore, which is my favorite bookstore in the world. Um, it's actually not affiliated with the university, but it's named 
um, after it because it's across the street from one of the main gates onto Harvard Yard. Um, and it's an old bookstore, it has all used downstairs and new upstairs. It's quite small, but it is the most brilliantly curated bookstore. Um, just absolutely impeccable selection of things. I always find things when I'm there that I would not have found otherwise. And I'm pretty tuned into the book world, so um, for me to discover completely new things, uh, it, it takes a special type of bookstore for that. Um, so my favorite bookstore, I looked through the kids section there for the first time. I, I go there two or three times every time I'm in Cambridge. Um, and I'd never been in the kids section and I found this absolutely adorable children's book. Um, Extra Yarn, as you can see, it is about this little girl who, uh, she lives in this black and white world and she finds a box full of yarn. Uh, multi multi-colored yarn, right? And she knits herself a sweater, but she has extra yarns. So she knits one for her dog, and she just continues to knit people sweaters, and she always has extra yarn. And it goes on like that. There is a um, bad guy who steals the yarn, and the yarn comes back to her, and there are people who are jealous who tell her that they don't want sweaters, but then it turns out that course they want sweaters and she ends up just covering the entire town um, with sweaters. She knits sweaters for buildings and for trees and for vehicles and for everything. Here she's in a tree just covered in yarn. Beautifully illustrated. It's really funny. It's really sweet and I think the moral that there will always be more yarn is so true. I have mentioned multiple times um, about using leftovers from different projects for different things that I have been working on. Um, and I, I always still seem to have more. So um, like with the, the Madeline Tosh work sock that I used for a sweater and then I used it for this bonnet and then I'm using it for this old Dolna. Um, there just always seems to be extra yarn and more and more sweaters to knit. <laughs> so. I thought this book was absolutely adorable. Probably would have bought it even if I wasn't expecting because I just love it so much. Um, so definitely wanted to share it with you guys uh, by Mac Barnett and John Classen if you want to look for it yourself. Highly recommend. And that brings me to the end of what has been a very large, long and a um, little bit all over the place episode. So thank you for bearing with me. Uh, it's been really good to be back doing this even um, in not perfect circumstances. And I'm excited about my new spot, my new setup here. I'm excited about all the things that I'm knitting. I hope you're excited about what you're knitting wherever you are and um, that you were able to get in some, some rows of fibery goodness as you tuned into what I've been working on. I hope it brought a little bit of joy into your life and um, I will see you next time.